Hello. Today is a great day for America. Thank you for taking a walk with us into this world of miracles where we explore a series of spectacular incidents that takes place during the life and times of Jesus Christ. I am Reverend Ronald Nathan and I am the minister at the Hogard Amy Zion Church in Jackson, St. Michael on the island of Barbados. A miracle is an extraordinary and astonishing happening that takes place in the times and lives of ordinary people due to the presence and actions of God. The miracles of Jesus Christ gives us a glimpse into his compassion, his identity, and his future. These culminate in our exclamation, Oh my God! Today's miracle is Jesus feeding the 5,000, and this is now the fourth meditation on the subject. You can find the biblical reference as Matthew chapter 14, verse 15 to 21, and I read these verses. As evening approached, the disciples came to him and said, This is a remote place, and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the villages and buy themselves some food. Jesus replied, They do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. We have here only five loaves of bread and two fish. They answered, Bring them here to me, he said, and he directed the people to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and broke the loaves. And he gave them to the disciples and the disciples gave them to the people. They all ate and were satisfied and the disciples picked up twelve basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. The number of those who ate was about 5,000 men, besides women and children. With the dominance of a Western European worldview and mindset on our thinking in places like the Caribbean, we sometimes project this worldview and mindset to the biblical accounts, cultures, and stories of the first century. This attempt at using what is familiar in our culture today to understand what is happening in other cultures 2,000 years ago can create false images in our minds. Take, for example, how we look at this feeding of the 5,000. We see the little boy and his meager lunch and Jesus uh, performing a fabulous divine intervention that resulted in at least 5,000 people having eaten and being satisfied. And we praise the Lord, we say hallelujah, we thank God for that miraculous intervention. Have we ever asked the question, was it the will of God in the first century to make sure that the masses had enough to eat? What does that say for us today in respect to the millions of human beings going to bed tonight without a meal in their empty stomachs? Will we, like the disciples, say, send them away to find something to eat? Or will we heed to Jesus' words, They do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. Are you crazy? I'm hearing you saying, We cannot feed all these hungry people. Could it be that Jesus was saying to the Christian church, take responsibility for feeding the hungry? 
especially in a world of overproduction of food, greed, and malnourishment, should the church be offering a counterculture? Could it be that a new model of church could be featured? A church where the people would hear the word of God for their sin sick soul, receive a touch of healing for their physical being, and also get a meal for their hungry bellies. Nah, that would be too radical and extreme. Instead, let the hungry go and bat battle with the shopkeepers and the food merchants. Then we can say, the people should have thought about their own needs. It is because of their laziness why there were so many poor people. Let them go and get a job. They are tricksters just sponging off of other people. I'm sure that statements like these and opinions like these were made in the minds of the disciples then as they are now. They are all excuses that we give in our Western world for not offering the hungry people food or even asking the question, why are these people hungry? Jesus said, I am the bread of life. It seems to me that the Christian church that parades itself as the perpetuation of Jesus Christ and his ministry to the world must also be offering bread for life. So there you have it, God the Father working the extraordinary through his Son for his praise and glory. If this meditation has been a blessing to you, we ask that you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Share the link with your family and friends and give us a thumbs up. God bless you and have a great day.